President Biden uh, finally visits the southern border. Now, you think, I mean, I've traveled a lot, right? You think being a politician, a senator, a vice president, like yeah. you would have at least some point in your career traveled to the southern border or been nearby. No, he hasn't. In 50 years in public service, he's never vi he's never been there. Uh, he's never wanted to visit. So his first time in 50 years of political career, uh, we'll show you this whole charade, this whole dog and pony show in just a second. Well, in 2001, Jen Psaki said he was near there. He drove by it. He drove by it. Okay, really? So that's me. the same. Really? Uh, well, so he anyway. was in Arizona not too long ago, and I think you can see the border from there, can't you? Kind of like if you look, you can see the mountains. That I are think in if Mexico you saw the mountains or something, yeah, you could yeah. see it. Anyway, we'll so get to the. Technically, I mean. Yeah. So anyway, we'll get to the whole dog and pony show charade here in just a second. But there is a myth I want to tell you about. It's called the Potemkin Village. Um, it dates back. It dates back. It dates. Excuse me. Let me try that again. It dates back to Catherine the Great. Um, her her time in Russia. Uh, there is Catherine the Great. Um, the Empress was going to visit Crimea and other cities at the time. The legend goes that the Prince Potemkin freaked out because it was such a hastily called trip that he sprung into action and he had fake villages created, fake houses, uh, fake churches, like a Hollywood set, you know, like beautiful homes. Uh, but it's like the Three Amigos. Exactly. <laughs> yes. yes, like this, like what you're looking at here on your screen. Like, the, like, oh, you drive by it. Man, that looks like a great little city, right? I'm not going to see. So this is like a Potemkin village, like a Hollywood set, right? That's the idea behind it. Now, so that when Catherine the Great drove by on her carriage horse, she would marvel at the beauty of those cities at the time. And look at that giant carriage, by the way. Imagine those horses having to pull that thing. Like a house, like pulling a house on a sled. Like, I was going to say, that's like a mobile home. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, are, are those, those guys little, sitting uh, on those horses too? Uh, they're, like they're on the, like the sled, tr you know, the sled legs, I guess. I don't, yeah, they, yeah, there's some people on the horses too. Um, so this, that's how the legend of the Potemkin village from Prince Potemkin, that was how that was born. It didn't actually happen though. It's been debunked. Prince Potemkin did spend a boatload of money to beautify cities decorate with flowers and other things like that fresh coat of paint on different areas to try to impress her and she was impressed well potemkin village is exactly what president biden just got to see upon his arrival in el paso texas um so reports were from a number of members of the uh, the border patrol that they were cleaning up mass migrant camps ahead of the visit by president biden all these streets where there were all these camps cleaned up before his arrival. Officials went around, kicked out illegal immigrants, which is arguably what they should have been doing from the beginning. Well, they didn't have a lot of time either because we no. couldn't even confirm this trip until the end of last week. So they were so rushing this is around. a lot of people who were moved in a short period of time. My question is to where, under what conditions? Well, hundreds are of them, they... well, hundreds of them were already sent back, sent to Mexico. So. Okay, wait a minute. So the president's arriving, and then they took o over 200. We at least have one report of over 200 shipped out, rounded up by the Border Patrol, and sent back to Mexico because the president was coming. Go ahead, David. Well, I was just going to say, I don't see you being able to move 200 people quickly and efficiently in a nice way. No, yeah. no, yeah. no, 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 no. And of course, a lot of this stuff was just picked up, thrown out, like all their belongings picked up, cleaned up, thrown out, power washed down, you know, nothing to see here. Even local news found out about his schedule and then reported that the president was skipping areas where immigration or where immigrants were uh, sleeping on the streets, illegal immigrants were sleeping on the streets. So the roadmap basically was set to avoid all of those areas. They don't, he don't want to see that. Watch. All of these locations are on the itinerary that we received from the White House. Didn't look like he was going to be headed to downtown El Paso, which is where we had seen many of the migrants who had uh, been living on the streets of Segundo Barrio. Yeah, so they weren't even going to go by those areas. Uh, the clock started ticking, though, the moment he landed in, uh, in El Paso. He stopped, he stopped in El Paso for about three hours, a really short period of time. Governor Abbott then met with him at the airport and uh, handed him a letter. So here he was meeting Governor Greg Abbott at the airport. And then he pulls out a piece of paper and serves him with papers. <laughs> here are your papers, Mr. President. I want you to read this. And, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it a little bit later. I'll look at it a little bit later. 
So what did it say? Well, it was actually a long letter. Here, uh, Governor Abbott explains exactly what he handed to the president. Listen. So listen, the, the president who caused the chaos of the border needed to be here. It just so happens he's two years and about $20 billion too late. He needs to step up and, and take swift action, uh, including uh, reimbursing the state of Texas for the money that we spent, but providing more resources for the federal government to do its job. Also, this is nothing but for show unless it begins to enforce the immigration laws already that exist in the United States of America that are contained in the letter that are provided to the president today. What did he say to you? What did the president say to you? He said he wanted to work with us on it. So he was pretty cordial. So what did the letter actually say? So here we have a copy of, we have a copy of the letter that he handed to the president. Your visit to the southern border with Mexico today is $20 billion too little and two years too late. And that's a good way to start a letter. Mm -hmm. Moreover, your visit avoids the sites where mass illegal immigration occurs and sidesteps the thousands of angry Texas property owners whose lives have been destroyed by your border policies. Even the city you visit has been sanitized of the migrant camps which had overrun downtown. El Paso, because your administration wants to shield you from the chaos that Texans experience on a daily basis. The chaos is the direct result of your failure to enforce the immigration laws that Congress enacted. So... <laughs> Biden walked around, did a whole little dog and pony show. He met with law enforcement for a few hours, checked out points of entry. Uh, border guards uh, showed around the president, showed how they were searching vehicles. Uh, they, set him, they set him up on a fenced off parking area, on a parking lot. They showed a pretend version of what they do. Watch this. So this is, this is amazing. Listen to CNN describe it as a show and tell operation, like my first grader might do in school. Watch this. This is all fake. Of uh, the president there, he's, it looks like he's getting a, a little bit of a show and tell there from uh, border officials. Uh, they appear to be demonstrating what looks like, you know, a typical search of a car that might come across the border and, and what uh, law enforcement officials are doing there to uh, keep the flow of drugs uh, coming into this country uh, from uh, Mexico uh, to a bare minimum and so the president they're doing that L let's uh, turn now for some perspective on this uh, join me now Democratic strategist James Carville a former Republican I mean oh and then you take the suitcase out there that's good yeah. and then you walk around with the dog I mean they did choose a very likable breed you know and so everybody likes a golden lab you I mean this is the kind of garbage but like a dog and pony show like he's getting a little show and tell so we've totally sanitized everything here for the president. So he's not going to actually see what what actually unfolded. He's not going to he's not going to the, a lot of the different points of entry where where illegal immigrants are coming across the border. Yeah. He went to a parking lot and had a fenced in experience. Uh, who built that fence? Trump. <laughs> yeah. well, Interesting. I mean, well, that was a separate section, but then he also had that he said he would tear down right away. Yeah. OK, so, cool. Any mention of that? No, no mention of that. Okay. But of course, this has all been planned, right? I mean, this is the, you know, the joke is the reason he hasn't been there in 50 years is because, well, this has been part of the plan while he was vice president and beyond. I mean, this is all part of the immigration plan to if, fl <laughs> flood the United States with, you know, millions of illegal immigrants. If you're a border patrol, patrol agent, though, like if uh, so, the border patrol is trying to get this him access and everything as quickly as possible and efficiently as possible. If they're actually needing the money and everything, then why would they be complicit with hiding everything? Like, are there some border agents that are pro Biden that are willing to hide things and some that aren't? Is there a battle there? Or like, why were they so complicit with hiding it if they need funds and they need things? I would love to know who did the sanitizing or the cleaning. Like, I don't know that mm -hmm. that's the, the border patrol, you know, the, the CBP. Or the state of Texas, because it doesn't yeah, seem it? like Greg Abbott would have authorized the funds out of state coffers to do this. To go and sanitize and like, we got it. And then, yeah. you know, accuse the administration of doing it. Uh, right. I mean, yeah, maybe like, I'm giving him a lot of credit, but at the same time, I don't, you know, why write a scathing letter about how you didn't see things? It was all cleaned up by your administration. If he did So it, it seems as though the feds come in and sweep the area and set the agenda of here, this is yeah. what's gonna happen and you better look good on camera or you're out, or you're out of here or something. Cause I, I just can't see them com complying with everything as bad as they're saying it is down there. There's no way, I mean, right. he didn't go, yeah. Like, can you imagine the president walking along the street 
next to just people sleeping on the street. Like that's not a visual that the White House is ever going to want, right? Nor are they going to send him to one of those facilities with, that are overrun, right? We've we saw the, the Congressman Tony Gonzalez shared when he went into the uh, the processing centers where they had thousands yeah. of people just sleeping on the floor. And the disaster that unfolded there, like they're not going to send the president there. They're not going to have any optics where he's next to an illegal immigrant. <laughs> none of the optics, right. none of the visuals, but none of the also, cameras were there. from a security standpoint, there is no way to secure something like that when there are like mounds of sleeping bags. Y you can't. You, right. You well, that's can't. why they kept him. I mean, this is, that's again, why this is just a joke, right? Because, you know, they, and they keep him in this fenced in parking lot. So he goes to like a, a, one of the. He goes to one of the uh, law enforcement centers and he's in a parking lot doing a little dog routine in the trunk of a car. Like that's, I'm at the border. No, you're not. No, you're not. Maybe you should go where the actual problems are and you can actually see the points of entry. Um, you know, President Trump was slammed, mocked, you know, mer you know mercilessly by, by the left for going down the border all the time. Mm -hmm. And he would go along the border. He would meet with property owners and stuff. So whatever you think about Trump, he was down there a lot. Yes. And was constantly meeting with different border uh, at points of entry, talking to right. the border patrol about how they're getting across and, and trying to really understand all of that. Well, but if well, the, it also if, seems. Go sorry, ahead. go ahead, Natalie. If the Democrats well, I was gonna say it also, <laughs> want to present themselves as sort of the party of compassion and that we're not afraid of, uh, you know, immigrants, we, we think that everyone is beautiful, then talk to them. Show us. Show right. us that then. Go yeah. ahead, David. It's like it reminds me of like a few good men. You remember when Jack Nicholson and, and Tom Cruise like he they there's people on the other side of that wall that want to take a shot at me or whatever. Like right. so he's standing at the fence. There's got to be you know a danger of people. There's no security around him at that point. So I wonder if they had to go into Mexico and secure that whole area too, or if this was all staged because they're going to have the president of the United States standing at a border wall with no protection on the other side. You oh, know, yeah. like the whole the, thing is none of it makes sense. Well, and the, that's the thing about the whole, you know, again, any of these and I've covered the president presidential events where I've been there and they, they do the sweep like two weeks ahead of time and they come back. They're doing it you know, hours ahead of time, days ahead of time. Yeah. They have people up on the building, snipers everywhere. Like this isn't like a hastily called thing. The fact that they had the map mapped out, that, that the governor even knew the direction and cities he was going again. Just all a charade, but again, well, this and that's why. Like my point is, like CNN, you you know that they've been responsible for doing fake coverage. It's like my my brain goes to they probably built that little fence area in the middle of the desert in a surrounded area, protected area, and right. there weren't even right. border patrol agents because I just don't understand how border patrol agents wouldn't be trying to get the funding and things that they need and be more adamant about that stuff. It just, none of it makes sense. It just seems like a, a PR stunt is 100% all it is. Well, we heard from another uh, border patrol agents who said like, you know, it's just demoralizing. Like it's just demoralizing, that, yes. you know? So anyway, President Biden has, before he was president, has for years wanted a flood of illegal immigration. Like this is part of the plan. So do you think anything's going to change? The president has told us about this repeatedly. Listen. An unrelenting stream of immigration, nonstop, nonstop. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent for the first time in 2017 will be in an absolute minority in the United States of America. Absolute minority. Fewer than 50 percent of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. Yeah, it's a source of our strength. So, you know, Brazil Bush in the chat or Luke, someone that's in the chat in on Rumble says it's a green screen. Yeah, a few people are saying that. <laughs> yeah, like like Zelensky. I mean, this is, it's, yeah. it's a it's a it's a playbook right out of Pyongyang. You know, it's a it's like such a North Korean th yeah. thing to do. Like, oh, somebody's somebody important is visiting. Let's hide everything. You know, yeah. get some paid actors to walk around, pretend to be working and. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's amazing. If you were president of the United States, would you be that uh, un, uh, unaware? Like, are you that tapped yeah. out where you don't even read I mean, when like you have dementia, newspaper? I think you're slightly more tapped out. Yeah. I guess it's easier to keep you, like, keep baby in a corner when you have dementia, like Biden yeah. does. But um, you think, like, he's, you, do you read the newspapers at all? You know that this is a disaster? I mean... I would yell at my staff like, no, I want to see what's actually going on there. Yeah. You know, well, and think about it. We we don't know. Like it could be a, a thing where the president is handed a specific newspaper. He gets certain information like they can completely keep him in the dark 
as much as they want, like controlling what's on the TVs, only access to certain channels. Like we don't know the level of control they have over these people. Yeah, that's true. Well, we'll be continuing to watch this to see with the disaster. I mean, again, the, the estimates are 2 million so far have already under, under Biden's watch already poured across the border. And this is all part of the plan. How many millions more this year will, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, you know, you have a, a secretary Mayorkas saying, hey, you know, with Title 42 or not, the border is closed. The border is closed. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.